Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 25 of the processing tutorial. In the last two lessons, we got started with animation. And in doing animation, we learned about sprite sheets, we learned about the P images and how to manipulate them. We also learned how to cut up those sprite sheets using the get method. And in the last lesson, we talked about 2D arrays. And 2D arrays are important because it's a, it's a good way that we can store all of the information from our sprite sheet once we've cut it into little pieces. And at the end of last lesson, we got this working. And all it really was was a, a demonstration of what's happening in the 2D array and how we're storing all of our, our images. And so you notice here the, the first part of my 2D array, this, this 0, 1, 2, 3, is storing the row. And then the second will be storing the actual column I'm accessing. So if I said, uh, one and two, it would be this row right here down to one and then zero, one, two. So this guy here walking left, that would be uh, one and two. All right, so the last lesson didn't have any, any animation, but everything right now is set up for animation. So we're ready to actually kind of animate the guy and move him around. And eventually we'll get rid of this green background uh, but for now, I'm going to keep it on there just for testing purposes. Okay, so what do we need in order to get the guy moving around? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to let player be in charge of the actual location of the character. And we have an X and Y variable in here, but we're not using it yet. And we want to we want to be able to use it. And we want to be able to use it in conjunction with our move method over here that's controlling the the keys okay now your first inclination might be to just directly access these x and y variables and, and modify them in here but it's not really the best way to do things uh, in the long run it, that can get a little bit messy an easier way to do it is to create a new method in player and we're going to call this update player. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to let information come into player that changes the internal state, meaning the x and y values are going to be changed via this update player method. And now this update player method actually will do a few more things, but we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so out here what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to take this x and y variable and we need to put it down here. And we need to actually assign them a value of zero. And you'll see why in just a minute. We're also gonna get rid of this ellipse because we're no longer gonna be drawing the ellipse inside our main area here. And that's about it. Well doesn't really do much because now I can't move anything and I'm not drawing anything except for the players. So how am I going to change this in order to get the movement information into my my player over here? Well to do that I'm actually going to first I'm going to change this variable to be x delta and I'm going to change this to be y delta. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm no longer letting this x and y out here be the variables that are controlling the location, they're actually just going to tell the player object how much the how much the the player has changed since the last time the draw loop is run. Meaning it's going to send in the change in x and change in y and it's going to base that on what we've pressed. So if I press w, when it goes through the draw loop once, it's going to say minus minus. That means it's going to change my y delta to be negative 1. That means in that loop, I've moved negative one. And then instead, I'm going to send negative one into update player, and then update player will handle it however it wants. All right, so let's let's look at how, how that works. First, I'm going to change these to be deltas instead. Now, you might be wondering, you could say, yeah, you can just keep it x. And that's true, I could keep this x and y out here. But when people are looking at your code and they see something like x delta, they know that this is not a location on the screen, but it's a change in some type of movement or some something. If I just put x and y there, somebody might assume that it's actually the x and y location, uh, and I'm changing that around the screen. 
but that's not the case it's just the x and y are just changing the the amount that the player is going to move in order to let the player handle that information I need to send this information into it via the update player method. So I say x delta and I say y delta. Okay, so every time this move is called, which is part of the draw loop, these get set to zero and then it either bumps it up or down, negative one y, and bumps it up or down for x or not. It could end up being zero and nothing actually gets gets done. Okay. So let's see how it looks over here then and if you remember when you're passing things in this is an integer out here I'm passing in and I could make it a float but for now we're gonna make it integers just to just to make it a little bit a little bit easier to, to understand uh, I'll come over here and I'm gonna say x delta as well and I'm gonna say int y delta I don't need to make these the same variable name as these out here it doesn't need to be but it just happens to be that they're doing the same thing, so I might as well keep it that way. Uh, let's see, so x is equal to x plus x delta, and y is equal to y plus y delta. Okay, so I've just sent the information in via these parameters, these two parameters here, and then I've updated my x and my y based on the, the delta value for each one. Okay, so now the player class is in charge of the location, and it's also going to be in charge of the drawing. Now, I'm not drawing these characters as they are. I want to draw them. I want to draw something a little bit different. I want to draw some animation. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take. Hmm, let's see which character. Let's do this three and actually two and zero. I think is the guy facing downwards. And I'm going to put this as x and y. And then I'm going to run this code. Okay, so now I have the guy here. He's centered in the screen. And if I do this, I can move him around using my, my keys. Now, the keys are detecting out here. But I'm sending the change into here. And then it's updating the internal state of the player object. And there's no animation, of course. I'm just drawing one image and moving it around. But we're going to get to the animation in just a minute. But before we can get to the animation, we need a few variables that are going to control information about the character. And the first one I'm going to do is something called in motion. And all this is going to do is it's going to let us know whether the character is moving or not. And I'm going to start the character off as false. So if you if I run this this guy right here this is the standing still image the going down standing still image if I were to change this to be one that's gonna be the going left standing still image so if in motion is false that's the image I want to draw alright but I need to know the direction I'm drawing gonna draw it in am I gonna draw the standing still down or left or right or up well to do that I'm going to make a variable and it's going to be called int current direction and it's just going to be an integer and let's start current direction off at one that means the character is going to start facing to the left uh, let's also do something called current frame int current frame current frame is going to be Oh, sorry, let's make current frame a floating point, actually. You're going to see why I'm going to do that in just a minute. Let's make current frame a floating point, and let's set current frame. Uh, let's set current frame equal to zero. That way the character starts as still to match the in motion value. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to do is something It's a little bit different. You haven't, you haven't seen something like this before but it's going to be a final value and what final says is once it's declared it can't be changed and if you've ever done any functional programming it's it's kind of like every variable in functional programming uh, you, you can't assign a new value to it unless you redeclare the variable essentially uh, so up is zero and left is equal to one and down is equal to two 
and right is equal to 3. And you're probably wondering what's the significance of these numbers and what's the significance of these capital letters. Well, the significance of the numbers is just a way to conveniently assign something to a, a word. So instead of using 3 to go right, I'm going to use this all capital right. And if something is a final value or something like that, oftentimes, or what sometimes called a const or a constant value, you give it all capitals. And that's just a, it's kind of a carryover from C and stuff like that. You don't need to, but if people see all capital variables, they're going to know it's a constant value. Why did I assign these numbers the way I did? Well, if you come down to my movement array, you notice that the zero, the zero row is up, the one row is left, the two row is down, and the three row is right. And that's going to come in handy in just a minute, and you're going to see why. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep those up there. And let's come back down to the update player method, and let's actually use some of these new variables in order to do some stuff. Now, I'm not going to update the frame yet, but I am going to put something in here, in motion is equal to true. And then I'm going to test if that is actually true or not. And this is something people often do in code. They set a variable like a flag, like a boolean, to true or false, and then they'll run an if statement to check and maybe switch it back or maybe not. Now, I'm assuming that the character is most of the time in motion, so I want the default value here to be true. And then I'm going to check if x delta is equal to 0 and y delta is equal to 0, then that means our character is in motion, or not in motion. So then I would set it back to false. All right. Now, if the character is actually in motion, it's going to be going in one of four directions, to the left, to the right, to the whatever. And I can detect which direction it's going based on the following. If my x delta is equal to minus 1, then that means I am going to the left. So if x equals minus 1, that means my current direction is equal to left. Okay, now see how much nicer that looks here? Instead of writing current direction is equal to 0, I'm just using my, my value up here, left, which is equal to 1. Okay, so current direction is now equal to 1, which then matches the row for my sprite sheet for the guy going to the left. Uh, so if x delta is equal to positive 1, then that means current direction is equal to right, and right is equal to 3. And let's go ahead and fill in the other ones. You should should be able to figure this out. Uh, if it's negative 1, that means my current direction is equal to up. And else if y delta is equal to 1, then that means my current direction is equal to down. Okay? All right. So right now, I, I can now detect the direction that my player is going just by using these values. And we can kind of, we can, we can play around with that a little bit. So if I put this in here, current direction, so current direction is an integer, so I can use it as an index here. So it's going to change my current direction based on the way I'm pressing, and we're just going to see the first frame of the character. So notice I'm going left, going left, now I hit right and my character turns right, I go up, character faces up, go down, my character faces down. I've also arranged these in a way that left or right takes precedence over up or down. So if I'm pressing up and then I press left, it's going to show that my character going up like this. Remember, I don't want the I don't want the up direction to take precedence over going to the left. That means if I was going diagonally up this way, my character would still look like this. I want it if I'm going diagonal to look like I'm either going left or right. All right. So looks pretty good, right? Now we actually need to animate this guy. So this is the, the part where we're going to loop through the other frames. So right now I'm only looking at this zero frame here. And this the zero frame, that's the one that has the guy standing still. So 
I'm going to use this now, this current frame. I need to use a little bit of math here. And it's going to be current frame plus 0 0.5. And then modulus 8. And I'll explain what's going on in just a minute, but just, just bear with me and we'll get there. Okay, so now this, this is going to take care of the frame as I loop through. But draw player needs a, a bit of an adjustment. I need to make sure that if I'm in motion, I do one type of thing. If I am not in motion, then I need to draw the character standing still. So if I'm in motion, it's still the current direction, but this needs a one. The one is saying, skip the first frame because the first frame is always going to be standing still. And we don't want to loop through that. And the next thing is just going to be current frame. But remember, current frame is a floating point value, so I need to convert it into an integer by using the int method here. Okay, so that pretty much does it. If I run this, we get our guy animating, and he'll go any direction we want. And we can make a very quick change to get rid of that green background now. We can just take off the green and call it the professor. You should have that saved in your folder. If you don't, go back and do that. And then we run it again, and there we go. There's our guy, he's animated, he's moving around. He's ready to be eaten by ants, and it will be awesome when he is, or we kill the ants. Either way, it's gonna be good. All right, so let's go back in and look at this little bit of math here. So what this is saying is the current frame, which starts at zero, Every time I loop through, I add 0.5 to it, then I take a modulus 8. All right, so it's current frame plus 0.5 modulus 8. So at the moment, current frame gets added at 0, gets 0.5 gets added to it, and then I take modulus 8. And what that does is it makes it 0.5, because 0.5 modulus 8 is going to be 0.5. Then the next frame that comes around, it's going to be 1, and 1 modulus 8 is 1. So now that I've, I've got to 1, it's skipped over to the next frame. Now if it's 0.5 up here, 0.5, you remember, when it rounds current frame, it will round it down to 0. Because any, any integer, anytime you take a floating point and round it to an integer, that integer gets rounded down to 0. Even if the floating point is 0.999999, and you convert it to an integer, it will get changed to a zero. If you had 2.89 and you rounded that floating point to an integer, it gets rounded down to, to two, okay? And when I do that, that doesn't change the, the state of current frame. Current frame is still 0.5, it just temporarily changes it in here into a zero. So now I'm still stuck at frame one or the first frame of my animation. Then it comes back around and it increments that 0.5 again. Now I get 1. 1 modulus 8 is 1, so current frame is now 1. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2, which means I've now moved on to the second index here. So I'm now on the second frame of the animation of the character. And the 0.5 is just a number I chose in order to get something a little bit more realistic. If you change this, for example, to 0.1 and you do this, you notice the guy's legs move a lot slower because this is incrementing a lot slower. And if I bump it up to, say, 10, actually 10 is going to give me this really odd, super fast looking walk. And I don't want that. What I want is a, a nice, smooth looking walk that kind of fits his gait. And this seemed to work pretty well. Okay. All right, uh, if you have any questions about any of this, especially maybe this current frame part and how I did that, uh, you can ask on the website or in the YouTube comment section. Either way, I'll, get, I'll try to get back to you. Uh, so next lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we don't draw our character running off the screen, and then we're going to put it all together into the final program uh, or into the main program so we have the guy running around with the ants. And we're getting pretty close to the end here. We just need to now make the guy be able to attack the ants and the ants that attack the guy. All right, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next lesson.